All right, g'day guys, welcome to another footy weekend vlog. Obviously can't go to an Eagles game this round uh, because the Eagles are away to Hawthorne, so I thought I'd do what I've done in the previous few weeks and basically just vlog my footy weekend and all the content that we're gonna be whipping up over the course of this weekend. Round kicked off in amazing fashion, Geelong absolutely circumcising Richmond, which I don't think too many people could have picked. Uh, some people would have tipped Geelong for sure, but to win by 11 goals and Jeremy Cameron to kick six of them, absolutely unbelievable performance and probably the most significant win of any team this season. Right now, I'm at my house watching the end of Gold Coast and St Kilda. It's an absolute thriller, which so many of these games between those two sides tend to be for whatever reason. They've got a ridiculously good rivalry. I'm actually going to shoot a video with Druzy later today called AFL's Best Rivalries. And if this goes to the wire, which it pretty much is 10 points of margin, six minutes to go, I think I'm gonna to have to feature Gold Coast St Kilda. It's absolutely outrageous. I just filmed an AFL Would You Rather, taking the opportunity today Instead of streaming, to put together a few different videos, pretty exciting times at True Footy at the moment. Have two sponsors locked up and a potential third, which I'm really hopeful to announce soon. Uh, but obviously at the moment, hasn't happened yet, so I don't want to get too excited. This one in particular, I think, would be a really cool partnership. So of course, it's Saturday afternoon right now. Going to Druzy's, uh, as I said, to shoot a video, and then we're actually gonna stream Melbourne versus Sydney tonight, which is gonna be a tasty clash. Druzy's actually been killing it on the live streams lately. He's, uh, he's been doing really well, so really keen to take part. It's always a lot of fun, um, so if you haven't go check out his channel, go do that. Tomorrow, I've decided I will do a live stream uh, with Hawthorne playing West Coast at the G. Got some mixed feelings about the game, which I'll talk a little bit about later in this video, but hopefully you guys are there to tune in on the action. Oh, hello, hello. Cripple checking in here. They call me knee brace. And I have an STD. All right, now we are back at Druzy's house for yet another live stream. Druzy, how's the old ACL or MCL? The ACL, hopefully intact. The MCL, definitely not. And yeah, uh, you had a scan, eh? Yeah, I did have a, a scan, a uh, MRI. Hectic piece of technology you gotta go through to get one of those done. How long were you in there? Like 10, 15. Mm. Like, all these like cosmic noises going on. I thought I was having like an out of body experience, but really I wasn't. I was just fucking laying in a tube. But anyway, football. How did you actually do the injury? Can we reveal on the vlog? Uh, yeah. So jump up, kicked my ass, doing a butt kick it, and then landing in a lunge. Clapped his own cheeks. Clapped my own cheeks in more ways than one. Uh -huh. Really? <laughs> what was the other way you did it? Well, I was double foot, and then I did my ACL. So oh. like three. <laughs> um, anyway. Yeah, um, landed, fucking knee twisted out, my foot stuck and my knee twisted out. Now I'm forcing that, felt a tear, no good, out for uh, six to eight weeks, hopefully not 12 months, but scans back early next week, so fingers crossed I'll be all sweet. His ligament resembles my hopes and dreams. Ruptured. Cool, alright, so back to the footy talk. Uh, tonight we're streaming Melbourne versus Sydney, but last night you actually streamed the grand final replay. I didn't see much of this game, Drew. Mm. What were your thoughts on Geelong's big win? Fucking mental, mate. Well, it looked like Richmond just folded in that second half. It was like the derby, like real mm. back and forth in that first half. Um, but Geelong looked bloody, like, I don't know. I don't know if they look really good or if Richmond just looked shit. I, I, I still can't tell. Um, but huge result from Geelong, and it just puts them right back into that premiership picture again after a slow start to the season. Cameron kicked five. I think Rowan kicked five, and Hawkins kicked fucking a bag himself. Mm. So their, their forward line's really thriving. Bags on and off the field that night, I bet. All right, we are about to stream Melbourne versus Sydney. Final prediction? Uh, pff, Melbourne. Yeah, Melbourne. Safe yeah, tip, me but too. Could see it going either way. Did you pick Sydney for the upset of the round? I did pick him for the upset of the round on the basis that they have won at the G this year. They've beaten Richmond, Geelong, and Brisbane as well. Uh, yes. Two of which were away from home as well. So. Big chance for an upset, but Melbourne are the better side. They are an upsetting side, much mm. like an 18-year-old female in my life. Oh my God, what? what? No, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. Um, I upset young women. No, I get upset by young women. Oh, okay. But we're also about to film two videos. Yes, so we are about to kick off best AFL rivalries from my channel. And what are we doing for your channel? Most surprising players, AFL 2021. Nice, let's get into it. Kings of content, we're back. <laughs> Who needs knees? Who needs women? Uh, I'm ready, I'm ready to go. I'm ready. He's thriving. He's thriving. All right, we're officially live on the Druzy live stream. What's Let's cool. Give us your intro, Druz. Who's going to win? All right, so I was just trying to say, I think we said this on the on the vlog earlier, but Sydney are so good at upsetting teams. They've gone up to the Gower, beaten the Lions. They've gone to the G and beaten the Tigers. And I think they've beaten Melbourne nine out of the last ten. Mm. Um, so this is a big clash. So I think we're in for a treat here, to be honest. And if not, we'll just flick over to the showdown anyway. Yeah, we'll chuck on some WWE. Oh, that's SmackDown. Tom McDonald. He's been their best forward today, by the way. Oh, old McDonald had a farm and boy, e did he! E e e e 18 seconds remaining. Melbourne get out of trouble just about. The ball's going to probably have a stoppage here. In my ass. Out of bounds. 
Ten seconds remaining. The demons closing in on Aiden a tough Oyo. victory. Oh, Aiden, oh, oh no! Petrarca, hopefully he's just corked. Eight, no, who would have saw it coming? No one. Including, we had wins over Richmond and Geelong. Two grand, final, grand finals from last year. Beating everyone in their path. And Sydney beat both of those teams, and they've beaten Sydney now. And Sydney brought a good contest today. I think he had more inside 50s at least at one point late. Oh, here's Petrarca, he's being interviewed. So uh, he should be right. Yeah, Petrarca's on his feet, he should be alright. Alright, it is Sunday morning. Night after yet another Saturday night at Druzy's. Uh, obviously doing the live stream, saw sort a of good game of footy. Uh, but today, there's a bit of football going on, but of course it's Mother's Day, so taking a little bit of time this morning to reflect before all the busyness of the day resumes. Uh, of course, I joined the Eagles live stream today. Mother's Day for my family, uh, as some of you may know, is a pretty difficult day for us. Um, my mum died about four years ago. Um, we lost her to cancer. She got pretty sick quite suddenly, um, and then... Within about eight weeks, I think, of us knowing she had cancer, um, she passed away. Mother's Day always kind of is a kick in the balls a little bit, especially because I work in retail. Um, so you can't really get away from the advertising, but generally I'm pretty good at blocking it all out, um, putting the blinkers on and not really thinking about it too much. I've always been pretty good at like deciding when I reflect and when I don't. You always think it's going to be fine. You always think the birthday is going to be fine. And then you wake up on that morning, and uh, yeah, it's 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 really difficult. Today it's hard because I've got to be productive. I've got to make the most of my weekends. Make sure true footy's ticking over. You know, really ambitious with it at the moment. Um, but you also, I don't want to be the guy that ignores it all the time because uh, you know, over time that kind of comes back to bite you in the ass. So just taking a bit of a time out this morning in the car, um, just alone, just to sort of think about things and. Um, it's good to it's good to have perspective. That's probably one thing I've been able to have a lot over the last four years. I got 23 years with an amazing mum, and that's a lot more than a lot of other people get. To be honest, I mean, I could have had um, 50 years with a shit mum, or I could have never known my mum. And uh, you know, my mum nearly died when I was a little boy before I was even old enough to know what was going on. So um, I, it could it could have been so much worse. Um, so. You know, for anyone else out there going through a similar thing, um, all I can say is you got to try and have perspective. It's hard not to feel robbed a lot of the time, but over time, I've definitely been able to realise that I'm definitely one of the lucky ones. It might might sound silly to some people, but I wouldn't trade the 23 years I had with my mum for you know a lifetime with any other mum. I had the sort of mum who would love me even if I turned out to be a serial killer. So I was very very blessed. I know we have a lot of younger viewers on True Footy. Um, so I guess my only advice to you guys would be just to, you know, make the most of these days. So Mother's Day might not seem like a big deal when you're a kid, um, or even a young man with a healthy mum. But right now, it's hard not to feel jealous that everyone else gets to go to have a lunch with their mum or even a conversation. I would love just to have a conversation with my mum today. I'm not really one to believe that mum's, like, watching over me or anything like that. I got no idea if she knows what's happening in my life, but I mean, she didn't even know about True Footy. Mum passed away before, you know, I started True Footy, started it later that year, in fact. And True Footy's like the biggest thing I've got going on in my life at the moment, um, and I'm very grateful for it. And if she was able to hear about it, she would think it's pretty sick. Mum knew how obsessive I was about sports and the Eagles. She knew all of that, so I think she would think it's pretty cool that I'm trying to have a crack at, um, you know, Doing this for a living, talking about footy, talking about the Eagles. Maybe one day at the pearly gates, I'll be able to tell her all about it. But um, yeah, for now, try not to make this too heavy. But you know, if you if you're a young fella out there who's got a mum, I just say try and make the the most of these days, make them count. It might not feel like it means a lot right now, but one day you'll look back, um, hopefully quite a bit later in your life, and you look at these sort of events and and just wonder if you made you know the most of them. Mum's already given me plenty beyond the grave. I'm still half convinced that she made Dom Sheed's kick go through in the 2018 Grand Final. Uh, but hopefully she's watching over today and gets the Eagles to four points against Hawthorne. But yeah, anyway, didn't want to get too heavy, but felt like I couldn't let Mother's Day pass without, you know, saying something about it. So it is currently 10 o'clock. Bounce down is in just over an hour, so I'm going to eat. Um, and unfortunately for Dylan, um, I am going to be taking up the lounge room for this Hawks Eagles live stream. Let's go Eagles. Welcome back to True Footy, where the footy is true and the opinions are poo. True Footy Live, it's time to thrive. How's everyone going? Hope you can hear me all right. Let us know in the chat. 
confident about today, although a little bit nervous uh, with regard to all the, the injuries the Eagles have. Don't want to make excuses, but um, we have something like a seven of our best 12 outs. It's pretty undermanned, but it's an opportunity for some young guys to come into the side. I've had a bit of a change of heart for the Eagles. Like, we had a good win last week, but looking at our injuries, seven of our best 12, Shuey, Yo out, um, McGovern, Hearn, Brass, like, oh, Liam Ryan. So, it's one of those ones where if we drop today, we go four and four. It probably means we're done as an outside chance for the top four. To be honest, I think top four is what will make the Eagles relevant this year. If we finish fifth or sixth, it's a bit of a wasted year. Um, but I'm having a bit of a change of focus. If we drop today, then maybe it's time to just get some games into the younger guys. And I'm not talking about a rebuild. Don't believe we need a rebuild. But there's an opportunity uh, for guys like Witherden, uh, Harry Edwards down back. Uh, Bailey Williams is in the side today. Very, very excited about the future of Bailey Williams. That being said, still confident we're gonna win. And of course, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Not sure how many mothers are actually watching this stream. Probably none so far, but uh, nonetheless, give your, give your mums a hug. Scoreless first quarter, uh, sorry, goalless first quarter rather. Eight behinds in total, lots of rush behinds. Eagles dominated the inside 50s and general field position, but couldn't put it on the scoreboard. Some good defensive efforts from the Hawks there. I feel like as the game settles though, the Eagles will start to take control. I'm hopeful, I'm hopeful. Any genuine reason why West Coast changed their club song altogether? Has anyone truly embraced it? Uh, like Mike, I think, has anyone truly embraced it? I hear groans when it plays at the stadium, uh, <laughs> led by me and dad. They've been going through a rebrand over the last few years and new stadium, new jumper. The team song is something that we've always sort of been teased for. So I thought they thought, ooh, let's do something young and hip that the kids will really enjoy. Let's get Who's the Cool Band, Birds of Tokyo. And uh, it turned out to be the worst piece of shit I've ever heard. Bailey Williams has taken a fantastic contested mark, kind of reaching high above him, standing at 198 centimeters. He's a player I really like. It's a tough one for Zach Merritt choosing between Port and Collingwood, where it's like, Collingwood's a Victorian side, uh, probably going to offer him a little bit more money, you'd think, depending what their cap looks like at the moment. It's hard to assess that. But Port Adelaide's in contention. The thing is, though, if Collingwood get a Zachy Merritt, I think you're going to see them probably do a very short and quick re rebuild as Williams lines up. And he has done the same thing, hung it out to the right. Williams goes back. Got to keep this. He has. Welcome back to the side, mate. You have a long future at AFL level. I'm a big fan of Bailey Williams. Good pressure from the Eagles. This has been fantastic. We've halved the contest in, op in like moments where Hawthorne have threatened to get the ball out. If Oscar Allen keeps hanging, having a good season, Kennedy might hang it up. That's true. I think the club might be less inclined to talk Kennedy into staying because Allen's there. You know, if we have no Oscar Allen, then maybe we're like, oh, we can win a flag if you stay Kennedy. But oh, he's going to just have time. He snapped it around the corner. He's missed, thank God. And that is a 27-point margin. Much happier than that. Um, that's probably a fair reflection on the half so far. So Adro thinks West Coast for top four this year. I don't know because the top four is so competitive that I did a ladder predictor the other day and sometimes I do the ladder predictors in the most positive eagle sense and I do it in the most negative eagle sense just to see what our range is. And in our most positive, optimistic eagles ladder prediction I did, I had us winning 16 games, normally gets to top four, and I had a sixth. There's so many good teams competing for that top four rather. Melbourne 8-0, no, not gonna drop out. The Bulldogs 7-1, or 6-1, soon to be 7-1 maybe. Hard to imagine them dropping out of the top four. Port Adelaide are a good side. Geelong have finally hit their groove. And then you've got Richmond, who are below us at the moment, surely come back. Brisbane also um, higher than us on the ladder at the moment. And then there's Sydney to contend with as well. So it's just so tight at the top. The Eagles just can't make too many mistakes. They've already lost three games. Oh, it's just top four just seems really hard. We, we also have mad injuries at the moment, so. If we can stay around the mark of fourth and get all our players back, then you know I think the sky's the limit, but still, not sure. Waterman lines up on a tight angle. He has slotted it. That puts it to 43 points. Cripps streaming into a 50. He tops it, smashes it to the, what am I saying? Oh, there's a chance for Darling. And he passes it to Petrocelli who snaps a goal. And that makes the margin back to 39 points. This has been domination for the Eagles. And good to see Petricelli get on the end of it. The problem with Hawthorne is that the midfield doesn't gel that well. The ruck isn't going away sometimes. We don't get clearances and there are very few leading threats for goal like a roughhead. True. All those problems really add up. 
Well, that is it for the game. The Eagles get a very well-deserved four points, backed up to four performances in a row. Yeah, baby. Did it with injuries, and then you add Kennedy to that list, which hurts. But uh, uh, thankfully, key forwards are not something we're struggling for at the moment. Either way, very happy with the win, and it's been a great live stream. We'll probably stick around for a couple more minutes, just answer a few questions, but we'll probably duck after that. Um, so Dylan can have the living room back. <laughs> All right, that probably wraps up this round. Eight. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, that probably wraps up this round eight vlog. It was enjoyable. Once again, back to back. I'm much happier going into a new week with a big Eagles W. Really pleasing result today, considering the injuries which I've talked about. Um, really good performance from some of the mids, in particular Gafford Sheed. Sheed's really taking his game to the next level. Uh, Edwards was really good down back. Oscar Allen was good down back as well. Someone like Jared Brand is looking more comfortable at the level week by week. So yeah, a lot of pleasing results. Got a good game next week against Adelaide. Hopefully we registered a W. Uh, the Eagles have some tough fixtures after that. I think we've got away trips to both Sydney clubs, the Blues, and then we've got home games as well in there somewhere against Richmond and the Dogs all in the next seven rounds. So it's going to be juicy. At the moment, it looks like Brisbane is doing away Fremantle fairly easily, about halfway through the second quarter. And uh, Carlton, at three-quarter time, lead the Dogs by 14 points. And if Carlton win that, the Eagles are within one win of the Dogs. So I'm actually hoping I get my tip wrong on that one. Harry Mackay kicked another bag of four. Lock him in for the Coleman. He's a star. As for tonight, going to edit this vlog. Going to edit... Uh, I've got heaps of videos on the go at the moment, so stay tuned for those. Then I'm going to go see my sister as well. Uh, I'm going to bring over a bottle of red wine, hang out for Mother's Day, play board games, spend a bit of family time. Um, and that will be really nice too. Thanks for taking part in the stream. Those who did, um, enjoy the content that is coming out this week and subscribe if you're new. I'll see you in the next video, guys. Cheers.